Okay, so I'm just going to run over the the workbook. So if you get stuck on anything, um, this video might get a, have a little bit of guidance for you. So the outline of the approach is we're just going to import the packages and data. Um, I've already cleaned it. We're just going to visualize it a little bit so you kind of know what you're working with. Then you're going to use TensorFlow to build the model. We're going to train the model and then evaluate. So we import the packages, uh, we import the data, here's the variables that we're working with, where dividend yield is the dependent variable. This is what the data looks like when we've put it in a pandas table. And these, of course, the variables that we're using to predict this last one here. So the first line of code is just to use the describe function from pandas. So we can see uh, the mean of the age and EPS, the standard deviation of each of these, um, just so we know um, what kind of scale we're working with. And here's the data plotted um, with the centering uh, very vis visible here. And then this looks like a relatively nice normal distribution here. Not too much skew either side, I think. Um, although it's hard to tell. So now we just split the data up and there's nothing for you to do here. Here we normalize the data, of course, this is very important. Um, and I think in even in this case, if you don't normalize the data, the, the, the gradient descent algorithm will get stuck when we're using this kind of learning rate and the algorithm that we're using. So until now, we've only had one line of code to fill in. Uh, this is the bulk of the project here. And there's a number of lines you need to fill in here. I think four, maybe five, depends. Um, and then a few here and one here. So I've I filled one in for you, uh, which isn't filled in on the workbook. So you can copy this one if you if you got stuck on it. But the target variable will have a similar structure so none denotes the number of examples and we use it as a sort of placeholder for when we feed this into the model um, and it just tells tensorflow that you're not hard coding this um, and this will this when tensorflow tries to put the data in the model then it will just put it in ignoring this and a uh, number of features of course um, the number of variables uh, when you fill this one in here, it will have a similar structure to, to this, um, but the difference is the weights, of course, is a variable, whereas these are just inputs and outputs, so that we can um, use the placeholder notation. Um, remember that if you're ever dividing by something, add a very small value. This this stops it from blowing up to infinity. Um, or, or any kind of singularity. So make sure you just add a small positive integer, so, or not integer, um, decimal, such as this here. Uh, here you fill in the bulk of the, the code. So this will be um, to do with the, the error function, which is the negative uh, of the average uh, log likelihood function that we derived earlier. And then you need to specify that we're going to optimize this and that we want to reduce the, the mean loss. So that's basically it. Then we're going to train the model. Just fill in the standard code here. Uh, if you've worked with TensorFlow projects before, then this will be relatively natural. Um, if not, then I'd suggest looking at the documentation, but honestly, it's gonna be hard to fill this bit in if you've never worked with TensorFlow before. So I would say, you know, perhaps look at similar projects where someone's training perhaps a neural network and see if you can kind of um, project it onto this problem. If not, no problem, just go to the workbook solutions and just copy it out and think about each line. So then we just, extract after training the model uh, a list of the loss and the weights obtained 
Um, here I ask you just to plot the, the training loss. Make sure this kind of looks like a sort of concave, uh, sorry, convex line. And here, this is important that you remember that we're using a Tobit model, not a standard model. So you need to take the, after you've made this Y prediction of a linear model of uh, of X test and weights, that you apply the, the max function of um, the censored value zero and the output from multiplying these together. And remember that the, the first value in the weights vector is actually the bias. So you want to add that on instead of multiplying it. And then here you just, the, there's nothing for you to do. Um, if you've set up the, the variables so that they all have the correct names, if you don't change any of this, then this will be, uh, oh, sorry, this, this last block will be plotted automatically and you can have a look at how well the model did. All right, that's all.